cool. All right, let's make just one little one little tweak here. I'm gonna. I don't love the shape of this. I'm gonna do a slide on it on this edge loop here. Actually, complete. And we'll just kind of scoot this one up there, and we'll scoot that one up there. So get this a little bit more evenly distributed on that geo. And now maybe it starts to feel a little bit more interesting. I also think it's just a little bit too long. So we'll just kind of shrink it up a bit using the move. I'm going to scoot it and then we'll just update the position of the leg. Probably add some kind of a trim piece, like a seal, to the inside of this area here and over here as well, just to help the transition a bit. Hard surface is a lot of just kind of transitioning forms into other forms a lot of the time. All right, so let's go ahead. Just can't stop messing with this piece here. Something about it feels weird to me. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate both of these. The reason I'm duplicating it is because this stuff here is destructive, and I want to make sure that I have a clean copy that I can that I can easily find without having to open up an old file. So there's actually we're probably going to be doing this a lot. So this is worth doing now. You can see I've got this piece here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all the way at the top and I'm going to make a group. Somehow, if I can remember, new folder. And we'll just call this like Clean Geo. And so right now I've got this piece of geometry, my little elbow thing, in Clean Geo. So if I turn off Clean Geo, that's not going to be like everything that's in here is going to be invisible. So I know I've got two of these here. At least I should, yeah. So there's that one. So it doesn't matter which one we keep. We just want to keep one of them. And we'll just drop it into Clean Geo. So there's two. And that means what I whatever I I can do whatever I want here with these. And if I decide to change my mind, it's super easy to go back. And I believe I've probably got this one here. That's the clean version of this. So we'll go ahead and and put that into Clean Geo. And if for some reason I decided that I wanted to get rid of uh, one of these, I could just show this grab the subtool, duplicate it, drop it back down to the bottom of the stack, and that'll be ready to go. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll just bump this up to like four or five, because ultimately we're going to need to add some additional subdivisions anyway, most likely. We'll hit apply and apply. So that now everything that we do is going to be a, a permanent modification. So we'll need to just keep that in mind. Um, and I've got these uh, these two brush categories that I was looking at earlier. Tap the comma key. So we've got cloth tension and cloth compression. So within cloth compression, something kind of high frequency. That one looks too much like chain link fence to me. I think this is probably what I used. And you've got some options here that you can you can pick if you like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce my focal shift so I get some fall off. And we'll just take a quick look and make sure the resolution is there. It's kind of crunchy, so I'm going to add one more subdivision. And I want to go up a little bit in my intensity, and I'm going to keep an eye on the other piece if I can. So we get something that's going to have the same vibe. We do the same thing over here. What did I end up going to in terms of my subdivisions? We got seven. So we'll add one more, control D. Use the same brush. And you can go the other direction with it as well. See, there's like a little bit of a bend that way to it. And if we're concerned about it being ident you know, identifiably the same kind of stroke or whatever as what we're used on this other piece, then you can just grab a different alpha. I think that looks pretty good. It's kind of what I'm going for. 
And then uh, let's see, we'll hop back over to the tension brushes and maybe something like this. Same general stuff here. Reduce the focal shift so we get a little fall off on it. And we'll just see what looks like it's going to be effective for this area. So I'm not loving how much it's running into this part there. That's just kind of that's kind of what I'm playing with. So this is these are pretty parallel lines. Maybe I'll find one that's got more of a of a V shape. Let me reduce my intensity for this second stroke. All the stuff you can smooth it out too, which helps a little bit. Yeah, it really works as well for me. This one's a little bit more of a challenge. A lot of the stuff is just kind of experimenting and playing around. I think that one's reasonably successful. So maybe we'll hop back to where we were. Get one of these that's a little bit more parallel. Hit that focal shift. I just need more focal shift, more fall off. So it blends a little bit more easily in with what's going on down here. Yeah, I think that's, we can live with that. And does it feel consistent with the other ones? I think so. And now we'll just add in that little that little uh, seam thing. So we did that with damn standard. Make sure I've got lazy mouse enabled. We'll just run down kind of parallel to whatever our suggested substructure is. Try that again. Let's see I'm like a little wide right there. I can use the move brush to adjust if I want. Sometimes with lazy mouse with a, a really high value here, it can be a little bit hard to predict exactly where you're gonna end up, but super easy to dial it in. All right, cool. So that'll work for that stuff for now. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. We'll just do a mirror and weld. And I think this one's probably fine to just crash. I don't think we need to go through all the trouble. Cool, all right, in the next one, I think maybe we'll take a look at some insert mesh tubes. We'll build something like that and then maybe figure out some interesting places to, uh, to put some tubes in.